Hello friends, today in this video we are going to see the working principle of DC generators. What is it? Nothing but electromagnetic induction. Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction. According to Faraday, you can see that whenever the magnetic flux linked with the circuit changes, an EMF is induced in that conductor okay the lines of force or magnetic flux associated with a conductor or any type of electric circuit it changes that lead to the generation of emf in that circuit according to him e is the induced emf that can be the rate of change of magnetic flux linked with the circuit okay the induced emf is due to the rate of change of magnetic flux but by lenz's law the induced emf will always oppose the cost of producing the emf here the cost of producing emf is due to the rate of change of magnetic flux so we can give a negative sign in this region because why the induced emf will always opposes the cause of producing the induced emf okay and the induced emf is normally dynamically induced emf dynamically induced emf okay dynamically induced emf it can be generated by two methods the first method is by keeping the magnetic field as stationary field stationary and what will be the rotating parts conductor conductor is the rotating part we know that for the generation of emf there must be two requirements one must be a field and other must be a conductor so in the first case for the generation of dynamically induced emf the field must be stationary and the conductor must be a rotating one and in the next case the conductor is stationary and the field gap kept rotating okay these two methods can be adopted in the case of dc generators normally which method is preferable can you say the conductor is rotating and the field get stationary okay but how can be made it possible how can make the conductor as a rotating one it can be provided by it can be done by providing an external prime mover on this conductor what is a prime mover it is nothing but an external source they are able to provide the necessary rotating motion for the conductor normally the prime movers can be of diesel engines or diesel turbine or steam turbine or something like that they make sure that the conductor is rotated okay and the field winding kept stationary and they must produce the necessary magnetic lines of force or flux but how it is possible due to the application of external dc source to this field winding so whenever the field will get excited by the additional source or from the dc source they will generate the necessary flux for the production of emf and whenever the emf 
get generated whenever the lines of force get generated and the conductor is rotating inside this field windings with the help of a prime mover that the these two uh, these two actions will lead to the generation of emf if we are using a single conductor the induced emf will be very less and if we are using many more than one conductors the induced emf will be higher for this more than conductors normally we use armature armature windings as the conductor that uh, that can be of two methods the armature winding can be made by two methods it can be of lap winding or by wave winding we can discuss about it later okay these are the two methods and in dc generators we can use the field as stationary and conductor get a rotating part okay then how can we found the direction of induced emf it can be given by fling's right hand rule that gives the direction of induced emf what it says hold out the right hand with the thumb forefinger middle finger at right angles to each other then the thumb indicates the direction of motion of the conductor and the forefinger represents the direction of magnetic lines of force then the middle finger gives the direction of induced emf okay stretch your right hand in your right hand the thumb forefinger and middle finger in these three fingers the thumb will represents the direction of motion of the conductor and the forefinger will represents the direction of magnetic line so force then what the middle finger that are, that gives the direction of induced emf but the condition is that these three things must be of 90 degree apart from each other i think you got the idea okay i can explain it here you can see that this can be a north pole and a south pole always magnetic lines so first are moving from the north pole to south pole and i place a conductor in this region and the motion of the conductor has to be like in this direction then how can be found the direction of current i think we can see that my this is my forefinger and it represents the direction of magnetic lines of force and my thumb represents the motion of the conductor then current will be my middle finger that represents the current so the direction of current directly towards us right out of from the paper you can see that towards us middle finger represents so i can represent the direction of the current like a dot here okay away from the paper in this case the current will be induced away from the paper in the next case we can consider another case here you can see a north and south pole and the lines of force from this north uh, moving from the north pole to south pole and i place the conductor here and i give the direction in this okay 
I think you got the idea. My forefinger represents the line. So force, it is in the upward. And the moving direction, direction of movement of the conductor, my thumb represents that, the left. So what will be the direction of current? My middle finger, it point out towards the paper. Okay. So the current will be induced in this case towards the paper. So I can mark it as a dot here. Okay. I think you got the idea behind it. Fleming's right hand rule. Okay. Then we can discuss about the magnitude of the induced EMF. What is that? The magnitude of the induced EMF is easily given by an equation is equal to BLV sin theta BLV sin theta here E is the induced EMF its unit is volt and B is the magnetic flux density what is it it is the group of magnetic lines of force within a particular area its unit is Weber per meter square and L it is the length of the what conductor and its unit is normally represented in meters and V V is not voltage but it is the relative velocity between the magnetic between the uh, conductor or the relative motion between the conductor and the magnetic lines of force okay it is the relative Flux means the group of magnetic lines of force. Okay. So next is sine theta. What is sine theta? It is a sine of the angle between the axis of plane of magnetic lines of force and the axis of plane of moments of conductor. This is the angle between okay so here <coughs> sine theta means we can easily say that the magnitude of the induced EMF is depends on the perpendicular components of component of theta simply we can say that the magnitude of the induced EMF is directly related with the perpendicular component of sin theta. To make is it, it very simple. Uh, I can draw a figure.
we can consider mainly three cases in the first case in the first case we can consider that uh, the this represents the field and it again represents conductor and this represents the axis of plane of the lines of force and uh, this dotted line that it represents the axis of plane of conductor okay and what will be this angle this angle represents theta in the first case we can represent the induced emf is the is a directly induced emf is directly proportional to v sin theta means the relative motion between the conductor and the lines and the perpendicular component of the angle between these two planes okay in the second case we can see that the conductor and the lines of force become perpendicular okay this angle is 90 degree so that the emf will be maximum okay you can think that if my hand that represents the magnetic lines of force and this one can be a conductor in the first case that likely to be this case this direction okay an angle exists between this that is theta in the second case what the conductor and the lines of force become 90 degrees so that the maximum flux links with this conductor okay this will be the lines of force and this will be the conductors so whenever this both of them become 90 degree or the angle between the conductor and the lines of force become 90 degree there will be the maximum flux linking occurs can you understand okay and this condition the emf will be maximum because maximum lines of force get changed due to the rotation of this conductor whenever the angle between the plane of rotation of the conductor and the lines of force become 90 degree the maximum lines of lines of force or flux get linked with the circuit get changes and emf will induce at this case maximum we know that sin 90 is value of sin 90 is what one okay okay we can consider the third case in the third case we can see that the field and the conductors are parallel so that is there any emf will be induced no because the linking uh, the conductor will not cut any magnetic lines so in the third case the field and the conductors are moving parallel so the lines of force will not touch the conductor and the induced emf will be 
zero. Okay. Now EMF will induce in this case, in the third case. Okay. They actually. It is the basic working principle of DC generators. Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction. And the rule behind it is Fleming's right hand rule. And the direction, the right hand rule also gives the direction of induced EMF by forefinger, middle finger, and by using our thumb. Okay. And the magnitude is given by <coughs> e is equal to V sin theta. <coughs> Sorry. From this equation, we can easily calculate that the magnitude of the induced EMF is directly proportional to the perpendicular component of the angle between the plane of axis of magnetic line of force and the conductor. Okay, I think you got the idea of the working principle of DC generators. Okay, thank you.